And then when we start to let go, everybody makes sure your phone is off so we have no change in while I'm speaking. <laughs> Very nice, no? mm -hmm.
Yeah. No. Don't tell it. Sorry.
our skills and talents, we have down there in this land. It is too much for me to mention. Yeah. The level of education keep rising so higher. And if I'm wrong, don't say that I'm right. Oh, I want to tell everybody, I'm so proud of my country. Don't care wherever I may be.
In remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Geary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader. As one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantee. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence.
in remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader. As one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantine. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada, for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. In remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader. As one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantine. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada, for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. My name is Ashley McSween from Philippines. My name is Anna In remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada. Project as a visionary leader. My name is Julian. 
as one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantin. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader, as one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantin. 
And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. In remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, First Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we Good celebrate we begin today, your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader. As one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantin. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. This prayer you would know in what operation once you start your day. First, we give thanks to the Holy Father. Then, we recognize that we ourselves have done wrong, so we ask for forgiveness. And we also pray for others who have done this wrong. I will be speaking to you today on organic medicine for the 21st century. And I promise you, there will be someone that you need to forgive. So, let us even as we meditatively uh, set the Lord's prayer, let us take it with us throughout uh, each year, international church. In remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader, as one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. Project 47. We thank you for the establishment of this area developed here in Tantin. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. The non smoke Happy birthday in, in remembrance today and in presence. Because it is ill health and it is a health risk. You're not smoking, you are still inherited. 
what the smoker gives off. So in essence, when the smoker smokes, if you inhale the smoke from the smoker, that smoke is killing you and I softly. I want to talk to you on one more On one more aspect, welcome, Dr. Spencer. I want to talk to you on one more aspect, and that would be the importance of clean water and fresh water. In remembrance, and happy birthday to you. So I will summarize that. Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate my hope, your birth, I that after I'm as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader, as one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. Embellish those cells to be sold. But we have tourists. We thank you goes to the tropics for the establishment the and spend maybe two weeks at the ocean. So when they're in the ocean, of this area developed here in Tanti. And we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century. Organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. The digestive system and it ends up in your legs. Help me to understand how will we be able to get rid of that new cellulitis that is being created by us? What gave us the, the, the earth, the land? to take care of the animals. God is our one source. So he gave us food, land, water, metal, mineral, animals, and lastly, human beings to take care of them. So if you are a human, we can use what God has given to us, the different methods for our advantage. But In remembrance, happy birthday to you, Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada. So when you eat or digest, as a visionary leader, as one who led with fierce integrity, discipline, and class. I want to talk to you also about the importance of We thank you a decision for the establishment being a summer. in order for you to be able of this to area developed here in Tanti and we thank you for the vision you had for Grenada for the 21st century organic medicine to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs Happy birthday in remembrance and in presence. Do your cooking, do your laundry. Eight hours of work, eight hours of play. Let no one take this one away from you. Eight hours of sleep. You need to be in bed between the hours of 10 and 2 a.m. at night because that is the time melatonin kicks in. It is the time when we have deamination protein, we have rejuvenation of the cells, we have the liver, the lungs, the kidneys, 
getting rid of toxin in the body. And it is the time when you go into REM sleep. I refer to the fifth state, rapid eye movement sleep. It is the time when you dream. In order for In remembrance, happen, happy birthday you to, to you. Honorable Sir Eric Matthew Gary, first Prime Minister of Grenada. Today we celebrate your birth as a star born in Grenada, as a visionary leader, as one who led with fierce integrity. Eight hours of discipline will put you in the fight and class. You will not be stressed out under the stress of the day. You will be able to take things. In we thank you. You will be able to take for the establishment as the day unfolds. So eight hours of work, whether you are in school of or this area developed in here in Tanti. Eight hours of play. And we thank you for the vision. Eight hours you had for Grenada for the 21st century. No. Organic medicine about to replace synthetic pharmaceutical drugs. Happy so birthday happy in remembrance mothers, and in father, presence. Sons, daughters, daughter, sons. But with the nuclear family, if we promise ourselves as Jeremiah 29, 1 to 5 indicates that we follow a plant-based diet, most of all that we build houses and live in them, live off the land. So I will give you an example of unfair advantage that happened Wanting them to participate in the same sports, and let me make a definition here. So if you're a male and you try to be a female and you want to run in a race with female, it is an unfair advantage. And I give you the two scientific reasons for this. Because a male has more testosterone. At the age of 8 to 10, a boy or girl have just about um, an average similar amount of um, estrogen and testosterone. But if God designed you to be a man, you will have uh, genitalia for a man, and the woman, you would have your um, sexual I want to say, your greatest commodity. You want to protect it at every use. So I am giving you this example that transgender, it's an unfair advantage to, the, to, to women because testosterone, you have more testosterone. Secondly, your body needs 65% of water every day, half your body weight to be drunk drank in water, but mainly to know that your body is composed of 65% of water because you have muscle cells and not fat cells. Every female has the average of 55% of water because women, female, girls have more fat cells. So we have, the ladies have more fat cells, the men have more muscle cells. So it is obviously a disadvantage. I bring to you an example because I don't just want to um, speak off the cuff or lecture off the cuff. So in 1993, we had our last son, Jeremy Vaughn Nixon. And I participated 
in Midway High School five mile run. So Jeremy was born April 18, 1993. In September, just as when school was opening, they started to have the 5Y, 5K race. So I participated. At the time, I was age 34. The person who came first was a 16-year-old student from Midway, male. I came in second. I got my trophy for second. But imagine if um, the boy did not come a few seconds in front of me, I would have gotten the trophy for first place. But I am 34. I'm not even 16. I am 34, and I got my trophy for second place. So I hope this helps you to understand the unfair advantage that we will be given to young men who are transgenders. I speak for the nuclear family again, in which there is a mother, a father, son, or daughter. And if we have the nuclear family, every child needs their mother and father to grow up. So if you have the nuclear family, that child would have a mommy and daddy that they can depend on. But if we choose not to follow the biblical guidance, the moral compass of God, our creator, the result will be null and non-creative. We need a male and a female to become impregnated. I rest my case on the nuclear family for now. I've got one more thing that I want to let you know. The importance of being resilient, of being goal-oriented. We know that Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us. For I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and to give you a future hope. So if you are able to be spiritually guided by your parents to live a life that which would bring honor and glory to God or to have a life of promise, because in Exodus we're told, children, obey your parents in the Lord so that your days may be long. Obey your parents. So if a parent dies, it's all right. But you cannot have two daddies and two mommies. I rest my case there. Lastly, as you live and grow, and have your being. It is important that you look back at the life that you are living. Look forward to where you want to spend your eternity. And decide, are you on the right track or are you being derailed? We live in a dualistic world where we have either life or death. Yes or no, hell or heaven. We're reminded at our, that our yea must be yea and our nay nay. There is no need to curse, swear, and pollute the air. I came back to Grenada two years ago to reside permanently. And I discover in psychology I had learned um, many years ago that there is a syndrome called Tourette syndrome, where you have a tick, or where you may use foul, obscene language. It is more dominant among me. I ride the bus and I hear sexual innuendos and swear words. So if you are on a bus, that is doing that to you, giving you that kind of music. That person is mentally 
and physically abusing you. They are brainwashing you because what you hear is what's going to come out if you're accustomed hearing this. So then you will become one with Tourette syndrome. Maybe there are problems that you may have, but as I have alluded earlier, if you get a good eight nights sleep, there is no need to be overly stressed when you have come up and sees. I speak lastly of myself and my parents. My parents, Wilfred Benjamin Elijah Edwards, my mother, Anastasia Madeline Edwards, dash, we can say knee holder, have been my full support in my medical journey for the last 45 years. My dad passed some years ago, and my mom continues to be the matriarch of four generations. She is my full-time, all-year-round prayer partner. And it is because of my parents' needs, I say, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Their, my academy has been their needs. That is why I am back here in Grenada. Not to be served, but to serve Grenadians. I have been served well by every principal in primary school, high school, college. All I did was make sure when I get to the class, I obey my parents to know that the teacher is in charge and to make sure that I take good notes so that I can be a good student. Make sure when I walk the street that I am respectful, especially to the elderly. If that person is not married, I should greet them with Miss. If the person is over 19, 20 years, I should greet them with Miss or Mr. But I do not pass anyone without having respect for them. You don't use curse words and swear words in front of an adult. That lack of disrespect. It means maybe that you were not um, given the right teaching. Maybe you just had a mother alone to bring you up. Or maybe just a father or maybe a grandmother. And they did not train you properly. In Grenada, we go back to what we have been used to. I bring you now to Grenada with the names of every parish that has the influence of the Bible, of the apostles. So we've got six parishes. Many would be most familiar with St. George's Grenada, St. George Grenada. Before it became St. George Grenada, it was called St. Michael. I would like us to go back and have that name change within the next six months. Because St. Michael is the archangel, and he, as the leader of our country, would be the right name to give back to us because we, in our national song, we sing ever conscious of God. The name would remind us, yes, St. Michael, the Archbishop, sorry, the Archangel. So England had changed her name to St. George because there was a fight by the name of St. George. I think St. Michael is a better soldier for us. I moved to Karakou. So Karakou, the capital of Karakou, is called Hillsborough. Hillsborough was another fighter in England. So we will do like America do, because we are of the southern continent of North America. So just like they call New York, New York, in the next six months, we will change our name 
te kiariku kiariku. I need to bring to your attention, in 1972, the premier, that means he was not prime minister yet, but Paul Schoon had sent a letter to all the churches that on the third Thursday in November, we will have that day as a day of prayer and fasting to thank God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his grace, most of all, for Grenada, we are blessed, favored, and flavored by God. So I would like for it to become effective again, beginning November, the third week in November. We need to have that day as a day of prayer and fasting. But just a reminder, a water fast but reminder to give God thanks and to remember our Creator. We must be ever conscious of God every day we leave our home. I want you also to, to be ever conscious of God. When you choose to disobey, so remember I talk about dualistic, so either you obey or you disobey. But we can quickly summarize what God, the maker, will choose. So anything positive, we will go that way because that's the one and only true way. That's the way God intends it to be. So anything negative is a plot. It's from an enemy. It's from an evil person. But if there is a plan, we know that is from God because he has a plan for each of his children. I want to conclude before I read the poems on the importance of living off the land, plant-based diet, because if you live off of a plant-based diet, there is no need you will not have cholesterol. I want to emphasize the importance of those who live in the tropics, including our tri-state that we hydrate because we are belted 12 degrees north of the equator. Tropical weather, it is always hot. Anyway, in the upper cities, in the summer, it can even go as much as 100. So you need to hydrate every four hours and make sure you're drinking enough water every four hours because if the brain does not have that water. The water contains two hydrogen and one oxygen. Oxygen is the fuel of which engineers the brain. So drink your water every four hours. Make sure half your body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you should be drinking 50 ounces of water daily. Before I proceed with the poems, I want to remind you of what Project 473 is all about. So Project 473 was launched in January the 6th, 2021, a year ago. And Project 473 there is an email affiliated with it, United States Healthcare 473 Pure Clean Grenada at gmail.com. United States Healthcare, the four letters US H, United States H C is the number 473, the code that we use in America to decide on health care. The number 473 here in Grenada is our first four numbers of our telephone international code. I am a bridge between North America and the lower part southern 
almost central tip of um, the United States. Much of my training has been at William Beaumont Hospital, and most recently, for the last four years, I have been in research. So I had the medical director of William Beaumont Hospital, Dr. Michael Maddens. I want you to remember his name because he did something significant for us today. In medical week, we have a 40 hour of medical week, and we had the person, the doctor with the expert voice on evidence-based medicine, Dr. Gordon Guyatt. And I was there as a student listening to what he was saying on evidence-based medicine. And after I was finished, with, we were finished with the class, um, Dr. Madden wanted to know what my research was in. I told him organic medicine. And he had five doctors get me into um, William Beaumont Research Institute. I'm glad he did. And I want us to give God extra praise and thanks for him. Because if it was not for him, I would not have been able to pursue my neuro, medical, bio, research, scientists to bring organic medicine to Grenada as a role model. I want you to also, there are teachers, many names, and they said, don't name one because you may forget the others. But I want to just bring you back maybe from primary school. So all my principals loved me and made sure that I was the best student throughout. I start with my uncle, Uncle Gordon. Barkley, I'm even forgetting his name. I'm so accustomed to calling him Uncle Gordon. So Gordon Barkley, Mr. Gordon Barkley was principal for Woburn Methodist School. He was principal for South St. George Government School. And then um, I don't know much of his career thereafter. But I have been able to sit under him as a principal. And I was his godchild. So he made sure that I spoke good English and that I was a whiz at math. I thank Uncle Gordon. I've got teachers, Aunt Ada. I've got Miss Murray, who taught me good handwriting. I've got teacher Bernice, who was very strict. I've got uh, Mr. Jocelyn Bruno. Jocelyn Bruno is his name? Yes. Who said that I had a fighting spirit? What he meant is that I don't stand for nonsense. Discipline, I'm like my father's child. I've got Mr. Flurry from Spring School, who was another favorite. I've got um, in high school, uh, Miss Martineau, principal. Mr. Batiste, Hugh Dillon Batiste, favorite. They've all favored me because I followed my parents' guidelines. I was punctual for school, but the main thing is that I was an obedient child. I have my French teacher in, at Baylor University. And one of the things she reminded me of on my 46th birthday, she said, she didn't remember when I first met her, you know, that was the query of my letter. If you can remember when and where I met you, and if you have a picture of that time. But she said, you would remember me, madame. So if you're married, they call you madame. She said, you were always there. You never missed a class. But most of all, I can depend on you because you always had your schoolwork ready. I thank her. I did both Spanish and French at the same time because I find French to be very romantic, but Spanish was easier to speak. So I had my Spanish teacher. We had a good time. She taught, taught me the um, songs so that we were able to learn the places of Brazil, um, South America. I taught it to my children. But all the teachers that have gone through Mr. Oakley, everyone were my favorite teachers. 
And I was first in everything. So I was the first one to be in class with my sister at age 11 in standard seven because I was skipped in every class. It's my sister, Alice, Alison Edwards. I was first, the first one to be given a scholarship um, through the School of Medicine, but they thought I was too young. So they sent me for one year at the psychiatric unit and the general hospital. So I did vocational nursing there because I told them that I wanted to be a psychiatrist, the first woman psychiatrist. So I came back, I'm not the first woman psychiatrist, I'm something different, more so with the neuro, the brain, the heart, and the immune system, psychoneuroimmunology, PNI, because we've got uh, Dr. Spencer, who is a Grenadian and is a psychiatrist. He is a male, but um, for the female, we have one who is psychiatric plus, because I have done audiology, speech language pathology, counseling, mental health and wellness. I've gone through the ropes for 43 years, but it was all good. In conclusion, 473 non-plastic, non-smoking communities, and we begin today. So I've launched a project um, in February 2021. I did the pilot program twice, where in Caracou, Pity Martinique, and in Grenada, where every third Saturday in the month, everyone especially students between the ages of 13 and 26, must clean up their community. If each of us clean up our community, we will have pure, clean Grenada. So let us not wait on the government to give you the plastic bags and the gloves when it runs out from what is currently at the parliamentary place. But let us keep our community clean. We will breathe better, we'll be less stressed. Most of all, we would have less inhalation of carbon monoxide. One more word on carbon monoxide. Grenada is very hot. If you are in the operating room and the temperature is anyway, let's say like 60 degrees because you have air conditioner, it's okay to wear a mask because if you have splashing of uh, blood or anything, you are covered. I myself am an intraoperative monitor, so if I am there, I would make sure I have on my mask. But mask should only be worn over the mouth if you have a communicable disease. Other than that, if you live in Grenada, you should not wear a mask for mask, um, decision that the government has made for you for this main health reason. When you wear a mask over your nose and your mouth, after 10 minutes, you know we are supposed to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Instead, we will be breathing in carbon monoxide and we will be giving ourselves a slow death. So I asked our MOH, Dr. Sean Charles, if my patient has asthma, is an asthmatic patient, so when you have asthma, your sinuses right around your nose are clogged. So the only other orifice, the only other open place for you to breathe would be your mouth. So if your mouth and nose are covered, which orifice? would my asthmatic patient be able to ask for help? I rest my case. I will read now for you the poems. So the first one I want to read will be the window. And the window is the window of my life as I look back. I thank God for parents who are God-fearing. I thank God for siblings, uh, that we had a wonderful childhood so that I am able to be here today and be smiling after I've gone through, after I've lived in the valley here in Grenada for nine months. I'm now closer to the mountaintop. 
I hope you would help me get closer to the mountain top so that we can breathe clean, fresh air. The window. I open the window of my life to see the contents I had contrived, the things I wove with time and night. I just could not believe the awesome sight. A book all worn and battered too revealed a life so promising and true to help mankind and serve them too in love so rich a cheerful view. A little child I recognized who caught me fully by surprise. She leaned her head and gently said, follow me closely, I'll lead instead. Just at the time I took a look at that big worn and battered book, my smile, my walk, and finest talk reminded me of a red-tailed hawk. Argumentative, assertive, and prying at times were part of the era I became extra wise. To live as an island, no man can do. That's why my success are more than few. The Bible is a prominent book. In my home and life, I never forsook. I read the contents carefully to study how I can be set free. So I have been set free since at the age of 12. I followed the Lord in water baptism. And then at age 17, I took my first missionary journey with um, some of my friends from the Berean Bible Church in St. George's to Carico, Carico. The religion class I took the spring of 91, 1991, heightened my awareness of church work to be done. New knowledge, fresh growth, I must confess, from a rare gem, Rosalie Beck. She was my teacher. Day and night, I'll keep on serving the Lord. Day and night, I'll keep on reading the word. Thanking God every newborn day for a friend like you, my delegates, who led the way. Thank you. Now I will read to you the sun, the largest organic medicine in the world. It is 109 times planet Earth. Without the sun, there will be no light reflection on the moon. The sun gives light, love, and life to the world except those who, who are in the European descent, they don't see the sunlight for four months. But we who are in the tropics get to see the sunlight or have sunlight every day, which is important to life and living. Living in Grenada is amazing life. C'est la vie, it's the life. We've got it all. God has blessed us. Listen as I read. Superstar Sun Scooper. Most powerful and humongous by far, in width and depth, 109 times wider than planet Earth. Without the sun, icicles will not dribble. Without the sun, no man can dance without the fiddle. Without the sun, telling time will be a guess. Without the sun, our world will be always less. Without the sun, no snow will melt on the meadow. Without the sun, no natural light to reflect your shadow. Without the sun, no kisses for our evergreen trees. Without the sun, 
no flower pollination from the buzzing bees. Without the sun, there will be no eclipses. Without the sun, the moon will be obscured. Without the sun, there will be no dry and wet seasons here in Grenada. Without the sun, only treason and unreason. The sun decides the shape of the moon. So you know we've got full moon, full moon, last quarter, first quarter. Okay, that's all because of the reflection of the sun on the moon. The sun controls the moon calendar. And the moon calendar is every 29 days. So every month we have four different pictures or photos of the moon in its various um, quarter, full moon, such like. The sun propels the moon to stir and suit the water table. Without the sun, dopamine, we need dopamine for the brain to help stabilize those who have Parkinson's. Without the sun, dopamine hibernates. Without the sun, vitamin D confiscates. Without the sun, depression reigns. Without the sun, darkness prevails. Without the sun, tears and sorrow. You're lacking that vitamin D, so you go into a mode of depression. So we heard of um, the winter blues. That's what I'm talking about. Without the sun, there will be no tomorrow. Without the sun, try going to Gainsborough. In, um, I went to Atlanta. And Gainsborough is one of the um, cities that we have in Atlanta. Without the sun, there will be no Hillsborough, like Caracu. But without the sun, today we can say there will be no Caracu, Caracu. Without the sun, no work will flourish. Without the sun, plans will be demolished. Without the sun, cognition, impairment. Without the sun, rickets employment. So you know if you lack vitamin D, you end up with rickets. Without the sun, all animals would perish. Without the sun, nothing will be established. Without the sun, no hormones, employment. COVID-19, impairment. Without the sun, no photosynthesis. Without the sun, no metamorphosis. Without the sun, arthritic pain in knee and joints. When it gets too cold and your knees are inflamed, you feel the pain more. We need the sunlight here in Grenada. And we need a taste and a touch of the king of spices, of a nutmeg. Without the sun, Alzheimer's sun dummy. The last part about that poem on the sun. Out the sun, bone malformation. Without the sun, bone density, starvation. So as you get older, the bone becomes more brittle. Without the sun, no hormone melatonin. Without the sun, immune system deteriorating. Without the sun, there is no light. Without the sun, there is no hope. Without the sun, there is no vitality. That's why people who live in the Caribbean or in Grenada, they're full of life. We've got vitamin D and we've got melatonin. We are melatonin rich. Without the sun, there will be no you and me. Without the sun, no calcium absorption. So in order for calcium to be absorbed in the body, it must have vitamin D. Without the sun, no heat agitation. It will be cold and dead. Oh. Everyone 
needs the sun. And this could be a pun right here. Everyone needs the S-U-N that gives the same thing. Life, love. Life, love, living. Most of all, the sun gives light. So just as the sun gives love, light, and love, so the Son of God, Jesus, that's why he is here with us, those who know him, those who he dwells with in the form of the Holy Spirit. You've got the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. You've got the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you've got the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's why people can know if you are a child of God, because there will be peace, love, joy, gentleness, kindness. All the fruit of the Spirit will be with you because you've got the Holy Spirit. Most of all, you must understand that you have, if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, piety, you fear God. So everything is built into that third person, Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me finish now. Everyone needs the Son. We need the sunlight, but everyone needs the Son, Jesus. To taste, to see, to touch, to love. Life and light and love on planet Earth. We must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We must love God first with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Everyday medicine for mommy, daddy, and the whole family. Be it. I want to let you know two things I observed or learned, two amazing facts I learned from studying the sun. The sun, I taught at Cranbrook Institute of Science for 14 years, chemistry, physics, but most of all, I was the um, event, um, work with the event planner coordinator for special activities that they had. But in teaching the students about the sun, I told them it's a central rod that holds all the planets together. So if that sun should tilt, it would be too low. We'd have too much heat. If it, if it wasn't 93 million miles as it is away, we'll have, we will be all scorched up. So the sun seat as a central rod today, more so seat also as one of the planets. It holds the nine planets in place. And the two amazing facts that I learned through deductive reasoning about the sun is that God used a central rotating rod. He talked of himself as the staff to protect the sheep. So I, through deductive, I talk about the rod, the sun is a, a rod rotating to give light life and love to the world. Second, man's shadow is reflected on air, land, and sea. So as I am in the mole of the sun, I want to diffuse and debunk something that my colleague said in 1738 that put a minority of people around the world psychological torture. Reduction of self-worth. Pain stress. 
So remember, I began with the Lord's Prayer. Because sometimes for lack of, lack of knowledge, for ignorance, you may make a decision that you don't know or is not aware of. But today I want you to give God praise in your sanctuary for research. Because I was researching organic medicine, I was able to realize the error of my colleague, Dr. Charles White. He was a midwifery surgeon. His dad had an infirmary, a hospital, and so he did midwif midwifery. So he attended mostly to women who were to deliver babies. So when he observed, so I teach my students, my eyes are powerful tools for your learning. I must use them every day. So when you use your eyes, you don't only look, you listen, you learn, you observe. And that is what my colleague, Dr. Charles White did. And I apologize for his decision with using his eyes and not any scientific research. So let me just hint to you. When you do scientific research, you have to have at least 30 or 40 people doing the same studies that you're doing. And then 30 or 40 of you get together and decide, yes, this is what the research show. You don't only just stop there. You have to have your colleague peer review to decide your conclusion. Is it right? Dr. Charles White did not have either meta-analysis or peer review. He just went with eye observation to notice that the areola around the breast is dark and at the split center at the back of your posterior is also dark on the woman that he attended to. So he concluded, and I want you to think of the um, part of her where we talk about pronouns. So think of the word she, S as in skin, H as in hair, E as in eyes. So he said, if you have blue eyes and green eyes, you are automatically white, supreme. He puts you on a gradation. We can think about a ladder. So he had the white supreme at the top, the fe male, female, then the um, other minority, melatonin-rich guy, and then the melatonin-rich female right at the bottom. He said that in 1738, but by the time 1989 rolled around, my teacher, Dr. Edward Glennis, we had 14 books to study psychology of women, and she concluded that the white supreme male was at the top. At the second ladder was the white supreme female and the melatonin rich man. And at the bottom still was the third rung, the melatonin rich woman. So that decision was made in 1738. In 1834, William Wilberforce declared, or we may use the word abolish slavery, that slavery no longer exists. It took about four years in order for it to actually happen. But in 1738, over 284 years, so when we talk about the 18th century, like 17 something is the 18th century. So we had the 18th century, the 19th century, the 20th century, and now the 21st century. It took me four years to realize the error of why we do not have white supremacy. I apologize for my colleague, and I ask each of you to forgive him. He died. Um, in, when he died, he had gotten into an accident riding horse. 
And at the back of the neck is the occipital region. So his right eye was blind, and eight years later, the left side became blind. So he died a blind man, and he took all of us down with him blind. But thank God for today, January the 28th. I speak the truth from my research, and I have um, pictures of my mother to testify to that. I have a picture of my youngest granddaughter, Harper Lee, to testify to what I'm about to unfold or unveil to you. So it depends on where your father, grandfather, and great-grandfather was born. That will determine your DNA for life. So my grandfather, Richard Allen Holder, was born in Scotland to his parents. So he came here to Grenada. He married someone from the Caribbean, and he has, they had 22 children. But most of the children, if you see them, you would know that they are European descent. My son is married to a European descent, full European descent, because she has um, green eyes. Their daughter, our granddaughter, Harper B, has gray eyes, and our son has brown eyes. So, the bottom line of the interpretation, why it is wrong. The reason why this um, skin is lighter color, that is because their body lacks melatonin. So in America at Beaumont, we prescribe melatonin for European descent because when the sun is, they cannot see the sun, they don't see the sun for four months. So they need to get melatonin. We also prescribe, maybe three years ago, we were prescribing 200 IUD vitamin D because we need the sunlight. Today we are uh, recommending or prescribing 5,000 IUDs vitamin D. So the melatonin rich person, if you live in the tropics or let's just use Grenada as example, because Grenada is the number one role model for organic medicine for the 21st century. So if you live here in Grenada, you have the sunlight, you have your house, you have a little plot of land, you can plant your food, your plant-based food or so. You, do, you don't, you have the ocean, you've got it all, God has blessed you. You don't need to take um, melatonin, you, you just need to get to bed, uh, get that eight hours sleep. And you don't need to take vitamin D because we've got the sunlight 24-7. So because we lack, in Europe, European descent, we lack the sunlight. If the sunlight at my mom's, my parents' home, right now we have a set of bird of paradise. And there is one section where the sun cannot get to that um, the leaf. You would note, I notice that it's white. I look at the banana trees in the um, yard and then I had to do my own um, pulling of leaves because two um, growth, one with blubble, because it wasn't getting enough light, a leaf had covered over it. The bottom of the bunch of logo did not mature. The same thing happened with the banana on the other side. So the importance of the sunlight, because they were shaded, they did not produce um, the whole bunch of um, fig or um, blago. So on, if it's fully developed, we've got on a bunch of 
um, bananas, we've got five bunches and there are 10 in each one. So many a times we had at one time, um, I think it begins with the letter T, I forget the name of it now, but children who were born, who were on birth control, the parents, the child, the child had no appendages because of the birth control. The same way because these trees don't have sunlight, that's why they're lighter in tone. So let me put it, put it at rest for you today. If you were born above the equator, closer to America, Scotland, the northern part, Canada, if you were born, your father, grandfather, and great-grandfather was born there, you would end up with either brown eyes or light gray eyes. If you lived all your years, you were born in the European descent, if you lived all your years there, your eyes would be blue or green. My grandfather's eyes were blue. Generally, most children have brown eyes because they're mixed. We are one big family. Let us make ourselves one big loving family, caring for our neighbor, not um, even up to yesterday there was a case on racism. And anytime you hear the word ism, know that it is a negative word. So I think the police have um, imprisoned those who need, but there was a similar situation like George Floyd. Let us not have a repeat of that in the future after today. Because for the history books, for our history, everyone in the world will be called either European descent or melatonin rich. You should not be described by color. As long as you have the intelligence, you should be able to do whatever job that is given to you because that's your expertise. So in Grenada, any jobs, regional, local, international, as long as it concerns Grenada, we must have 80% of Grenadians working in that institution. We must also have 5% of that um, organization Grenadians. So if a decision, ha decision has to be made on releasing someone or someone misbehaving, we'll have a Grenadian to make that decision. If you are currently in a foreign country, I strongly advise you to go back home because home is where you belong. Home is where you're familiar with. If you're in your own country and you are being um, treated not as a human being, even like um, in the 1880s in America, a black man's vote was worth half a human being. This is sad because we were made by one creator. And if you did not take anything here from what I had to have to say today, know that we were made, all made in the image and likeness of God, and that there is no person who is made or who should be called primitive descent. I hope I have made myself I will go now and read to you two more poems. This one says, Dare to lead. So I've announced already we need clean water and fresh air. That is each child's inalienable right because your brain needs the water, the clean water. Your lungs, liver, and kidneys need to operate the way it should so that you can enjoy your long life in your um, country, in your community. So if you're a foreigner and you mistreat it, come back to your country. No one, home is where you belong. 
no one should treat you different. And if you have foreigners, those who are home, you must be hospitable to treat them kindly because that's what God asks us to do, to treat them kindly. Here, dare to lead. Give me your sons, and I will tell you a volume about their mother. Give me your daughters, and I will tell you about their father. Give me your children for a day, and I will tell you about their family. Give me your house, and I will tell you your life history and your story and unaware addictions and atrocities. Give me your Bible, and I will tell you about your relationship with the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I will tell you about your burden and your sportsmanship. Give me your hands, and I will tell you about its diligence. Give me your smile, and I will tell you about your joy. I will know the joy of your heart is your strength through God. Give me a smile. And listen, when I give you a smile, I get back one too because I get one from you. I thank you, ladies. Very good. Give me a hug. And I will tell you about your heart. I can feel your heart. I can feel your closeness. I can feel the touch of your hand on my body. I know if you are genuine or not. Give me your thoughts, and I will tell you about life and the hereafter. Give me the words etched on your heart, and I will tell you about truth and the whole matter. Give me your time and you will find your heart condition will improve. Your brain will develop neuroplasticity, meaning we can train one part of the brain to do something. If one, let's say the left side becomes incapacitated, we can help train the right side to help us to compensate for the deficit that is on the left side. Give me your time and you will find your heart condition will improve. Your brain will develop neuroplasticity. Your words will boost your immune system. Philippians 4, 8 reminds us, and I hope you bathe yourself in it daily. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things that are lovely, think on these things. So if you're thinking on these things, you'll be talking about these things. You wouldn't be cursing your maker and your mother. I promise you, you wouldn't have Tourette syndrome. Give yourself continuous eight hours of sleep each day. You would help boost your immune system. You will not be dismayed. You will honor and be honored, begging a seed of change from today. Give me clean water to drink and fresh air to breathe. I will turn Mr. Nobody into somebody. Fresh air, clean water, eight hours of sleep is my prodigy. Lastly, I want to remind you, I followed my dream with resilience, eyes wide open, a heart filled with bubbling joy, Empathic heirs to listen to stories during my community engagement and diligent hands using my skills and abilities to help the infirmary. I will read for you now in conclusion. 
Every birthday, I usually choose a passage from the Bible or a chapter from the Bible and focus on it so that I can study it in detail. At age 61, I chose Isaiah 61. So I am 66 now, so you do the math. I have been studying that passage since then, and I have surely concluded, yes, indeed, Jeremiah 1, 1 to 5 is right on target. And Isaiah 6 to 1, the prophet Isaiah talks about deliverance, but it is the word of Jesus speaking. Listen as I read from the King James Version. The man rich in melatonin, who wrote the King James Version. So I remind you again, it is about deliverance. So Jesus is speaking. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So Mount Zion, Sam and the dead in Christ arise. It is the new heaven and new Jerusalem that Jesus is preparing for us who love him, who obey him, who believe in him, who has repented for the wrong that they have done and have received Christ as their personal Savior. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed their flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your fine dresses. But he shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers. I am a minister. And truth. They shall call you ministers of our God. To know that you did not honor your maker. First, to acknowledge him that he is the I am. Because if he was your God, it would be less likely that you would have been able to conclude on racism. That's why Jesus asks us when his disciples say, teach us to pray. Forgive us as we forgive others. 
For your shame, he shall have double, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them. I pray so for Grenada. Now that we have discovered, now that I have 